In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at five new features in the brand new 2025.7 update. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. 2025.7 has just been released and what's really cool about this release is just how feature packed it is, considering that this beta's only had around two weeks for its development cycle. The beta or beta is now available so feel free to go and download that and check it out if you want to help contribute or maybe you want to just check out some of the new features. I'll leave a full link to all of the new changes and features all in the description below and the full release for this update will be available next week. So with that said, let's check out my first new feature and this one is probably my favourite feature of this entire update and it's the brand new ask questions action. The Ask Questions action is a brand new action that allows you to build your own custom conversations directly within your automations. The concept for this is quite simple. You create a question and then you provide the answers. And based on these answers, these answers will be what keeps the conversation flow going. So an answer that you give will trigger the automation. So maybe you wanna do something like, hey, you've left the garage door open. Do you want me to shut it? And based on the yes or no, that will trigger something to happen. Do you want me to shut the door? Yes. Door closing. This feature is finally going to allow us to have that fully local voice assistant that's able to ask us questions and then do things based on whatever we answer. And this is something that you can't do with things like your Amazon Echo and Google Assistant. I genuinely think this feature is going to be huge and I'm looking forward to seeing what the community do with it. I think there's going to be some absolutely wild blueprints and just lots of cool community projects. If you've got a really cool project or idea for making use of this feature, then let me know what it is in the comments below. Moving on then to something a little less exciting, but maybe it's a little bit exciting. I mean, I like it, which is why it's in this list, but we've got the brand new full screen code editor. Previously, if you've ever made use of any of the code editor panels, then you'll have been met with this awkward screen size or layout restriction. This restriction meant you were just limited to this tiny bit of space that was allocated, which would often make it quite awkward or a bit cumbersome, especially if you had a lot of config or a lot of code that you wanted to modify and change. Thankfully though, this is now going to be a thing of the past, as any code editor you now visit will have this little maximize button, and when you press that, it will give the code editor the full real estate of whatever device you're on, so if you're on your computer screen or even a mobile or tablet display, this is going to give you a lot more real estate to be able to fully edit and change all of your bits of config. Carrying on then with my third feature, and we've got the area dashboard overview. The area dashboard was a brand new dashboard that was introduced a few releases ago. It allows the dashboard to build up a set of dynamic pages based on all of the devices and automations and other bits that are all tied to that specific area. Inside of these pages, you're able to customize and modify where things are, and you can also choose what you want to display and what you don't want to display. I personally really like the whole concept of the area dashboard, and it's so much better than those original overview dashboards that we used to have. One of the main problems that I have with the area dashboard is the fact that I've got a whole bunch of different areas, which means I get a page for each of these and it makes it quite cumbersome and quite awkward to actually navigate to the page that I want. And while you can do things like create your own custom page that allows you to jump into an area, this isn't dynamic and it's something you have to do yourself. And that's where this new feature comes in. Rather than just having a bunch of pages displayed at the top, we now have this overview page that shows us all of the different areas that are available. Selecting an area will just jump you straight into that area and you can easily navigate back. What's nice about this overview is the fact that it's fully customizable so you can reorder items, you can hide and display areas and you can also add and customize features on the specific cards so you can do things like add controls for lights, climate, covers and more. Whilst we're on the topic of areas then, let's jump into my fourth feature which is the brand new redesigned area card. In this release, the area cards received a lot of love and it's got a new design and new configuration that make it very similar to that of a tile card. Using its new configuration, it's way simpler to now actually design and create a card that you want and thanks to its similarities to that of the tile card, it contains all of the same features that you know and love and it has things like the flexibility and scalability, so it works great within your section layouts. You can now easily customize the color of the card and you can also choose how you want the card to be displayed. So whether that's an area icon, a picture, a camera feed, or even just a compact card. 
You can also optionally add things like alert and sensor classes, and you can add in and customize your own area controls, and you can have these either displayed in line or at the bottom of the card. If you were previously making use of area cards, then these will automatically update, but you will need to go into them to reconfigure them in order to take advantage of all of the new features. Wrapping this up then with my fifth and final feature, and we've got a brand new change to the integration UI. The integration UI has received a brand new update that now makes it super clear as to what devices are in the integration and also where they are and how many entities are associated with that specific device. On the new integration page, you can clearly see what type of integration it is, and you can also see its current quality level. In addition to this, you've also got quick access to things like editing, disabling, and deleting. If an integration has individual devices that are all added separately, then they also appear in their own collapsible sections, which makes it super clear and just keeps everything nicely organized and neat. And there we go, guys. That's been a quick look at five of the new features that I've really liked in this update. If you have enjoyed this video or found it interesting, then don't forget to drop me a like and if you aren't already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell and you'll be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons and also my YouTube members and if you are interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find links to all the places that you can go to support me, all in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.